the architecture is really beyond what you see. For me, the architecture is what you feel. Green is not just about energy, but it's about healthy building and healthy for us as humans who inhabit the building as well as healthy for the planet. We've uh, designed the uh, first mixed-use uh, green high-rise uh, project called CORE. We've uh, integrated uh, uh, wind turbines uh, into the building to generate its own power. It's, I think, one of the, the first times that you see the green aspects of it, and it's not just kind of tucked away, but more celebrated. Uh, and, and that idea of sort of fusing ecology and, and architecture together, I think, is uh, compelling in the project. All the materials used inside are, are chosen for their um, sort of lack of, of chemicals that are harmful to us as, as humans. Uh, for instance, the paint has no VOCs, uh, which are, are harmful. Uh, it's like, you know, looking back now and saying, well, asbestos, mm -hmm. you know, like, take out asbestos in all the buildings, you know, five years from now or 10 years, they're going to say, well, take out this, take out that. And now we're, we're looking at those things and trying to sort of foresee the future because we know that they're unhealthy. So all the materials are, are sustainable using reclaimed woods instead of uh, cutting down trees to sort of find wood that's already existing or, uh, you know, uh, wood that has been uh, sustainably grown and harvested. It was a little bit of ahead of the curve in, in the United States, but I, I think it's, it's also uh, helped the movement in some way, which is, is very nice that it, it's become sort of a poster child for uh, the movement. Obviously, the more systems you have, the more complexity uh, in the systems, uh, it, it's going to be a, a greater cost. People say that the costs range from 5% to wherever you want to go. But I think there are many things to do that, that have no cost mm -hmm. that could be very, very helpful. Mm -hmm. uh, for instance, you know, keeping uh, the sun off of the glass in certain uh, exposures, uh, as well as bringing the sun in in certain times of year. You know, just simple, simple things that are uh, what are known in the industry as passive. Uh, there's active and then there's passive. Uh, the, the more passive you can do, the, the better. You know, looking at greenery, to me, makes me happy, you know? So uh, we always try to find the moments in our projects to interject a, a garden, insert a garden, wherever, on a roof, on a terrace, on a, you know, uh, in a courtyard, wherever we can make a beautiful space is like, for us, it, it has to do with, with green. So even though I'm not a, a landscape architect, I, uh, I'm very much into to the greening of the world. The ideas today are to kind of impress and, and, and kind of dazzle with form and, 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 and really at the end of the day, some of those forms are, are quite exciting and relate to creating certain emotions. But at, at the end of the day, if we can kind of perhaps do more with less, you know, we're, we're trying to, to see how we can minimally accomplish the sensations and the emotions and the feeling with the minimal gesture. Minimal gesture for maximum uh, gain. So that, that I think is also uh, ecological. If you can really kind of tap into the emotive qualities of a space and, and the sensations mm -hmm. and deal with all the senses of smell, of sound. You know, we're sitting out here and we hear the, the trees rustle and the water kind of gurgling and, and you know, it gives you a sense of, of pleasure. And uh, for me, that's, I guess, the genesis of, of our work is always how to make the, this place, the, the world that we live in, uh, or the environment that we're creating, a, a pleasant place to really make you uh, um, enlightened through the space where you sit there and you go, wow, I love this, this feels great.